Hello and welcome back to Conversational Frame Control. So this awkward interview with Tommy Lee Jones really upset a lot of people in the comments. And I see that some of the same mistakes are being made in social settings that cause people to break rapport. So let's find out what went wrong so we can see what we can do differently to make a good impression. McCarthy from Washington, D.C. Hi, Kevin. It's an honor to meet you. Hello. A huge fan of your work. Thank you. Nice Kevin, suit. Thank, thank you very much. Name, uh, Kevin McCarthy, Washington, D.C. Anytime you're ready. Right here, right, Kevin? Hello, yep. Uh, congratulations on the film. I have to say, I love how Will Smith can go back in time and, and, and deal with a younger version of your character. And I want to ask you hypothetically, if you were able to go back and go to an earlier Tommy Lee Jones set and visit yourself and give you a piece of advice based on the acting knowledge you have now, well, what move, what set would that be? Hmm. I don't know. I don't have a clue. No clue. <laughs> no clue. Well, I, I love the, the line in the movie where it says... So our interviewer here, Kevin McCarthy, asked a very interesting question here, kind of a deep question. And when looking to get engagement from people in a business or social setting, sometimes it's best to save these deeper questions for later on and ask simple questions that don't require any thought to get the other person to warm up. And those kind of boring small talk questions may not be the most interesting early on, but they don't require a lot of thought to answer. So your goal here is to really get the other person warmed up to get the back and forth started in that first minute or two. You know, the most destructive force in the universe is is regret. And I want to ask you if you can look back over your career, is it was there a role of yours that you that you didn't take that you regret not taking? Uh no. No. Um I'm of, of all the parts that I've passed up, I'm I'm glad I did. Now, do you, uh, looking at this movie, when you, when you... So here he draws on two themes from the movie, which are time travel and regret. So be aware that when you bring up a theme like regret into your interaction, it is a very serious frame to introduce, and it can give your conversation a somewhat heavy energy, and so it's not great to use in social situations or light professional situations. And sometimes you want to keep things light and fun early on watch yourself on, on screen are you able to emotionally engage in your own films or are you very self-critical when you watch yourself on camera uh both both uh, i mean we're you know, i've done this before yeah it's a professional so you have to be sensitive to the way it works to the appeal that it makes and um you have to make a judgment about uh whether or not that's successful and uh at the same time uh so so here we have two more ideas that have a heavy or deep energy about them, right? Emotionally engaging with an on-screen character or self-criticism. So by itself, this is an okay question to ask, but asking about self-criticism after already covering the topic of regret begins to weave together a very serious and heavy, almost neurotic feeling with the person we're speaking with. So if your goal is to have fun interactions, pay attention to the overarching theme or the frame that you present during a conversation. Both is the answer to that. Now, I, I love the dynamic you and Will have in this movie because he really doesn't know you because um, you have so many, uh, you have such so many secrets in your path, uh, in your past, and he kind of has to like figure you out. And I love that dynamic, but he's known you for 15 years. Yeah. And I want to ask you, if you could look back over and look at your previous characters you've played, what is one character you know the best and one character that's still mysterious to you over your career? My mind just cannot get around a question like that. I, I don't know. Uh, the character that I liked best. That you know the best, like you felt like you oh, knew. Oh, that I know the, Yeah, the you best. knew him the best, and, one, and the character you knew the, the, the least. Uh, it's probably the character I knew the best with Woodrow F. Call in Lonesome Dove. Mm -hmm. And the one I knew the least would probably be Clay Shaw in uh, JFK. I love the line, you know, there's this whole idea about Josh Brolin saying, you know, you got to strap yourself in and hope for the best. And I want to ask you, as an actor, when you, when you got into this business, what was that moment for you where you realized, oh my gosh, this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life, and you hope for that best, and that you would have this career and the successful career you've had? I usually answer that question by saying, I haven't decided what I'm going to do when I grow up. That's Great answer. <laughs> I love that answer. I love that answer. Now, um, looking back over your career, you, you, you've, you've played so many great characters, and I, 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 love, I love the Men in Black character. But if you could be one of your characters for one day, 
in real life, what character would that be? I couldn't, I don't know. Those characters are all imaginary. I don't want, I don't, I want, and I want to be real. Yeah. Do any of them stay with you, though? Do any of them ever come back to you? No, I don't take my work home. You don't take So here he shows that he's interested in concrete things, right? Things that are real versus talking about abstractions or hypothetical questions about what could be. So Tommy Lee Jones here in this interview seems very straightforward, down to earth, sensory, grounded, right? So in the beginning of the interview, he immediately noticed the suit that Kevin is wearing, which might not be reflective of anything, but it could also be reflective of his focus on what is immediate and sensory versus what is abstract and hypothetical. He's not in his head thinking about abstract ideas. He's very into the moment as far as sensory experience, right? And the questions that Kevin asked were described in the comments on his upload of the video as mediocre, trite, long-winded, nonsensical, confusing, stupid, BS, rambling, meaningless, existential, childish, too intellectual, and silly. So why did they cause people to be upset? Well, some people have a very direct way of thinking or a simple way of processing ideas. And when you go too deep with your conversation, they might feel uncomfortable or think that you're messing with them somehow, right? Interestingly enough, this very same line of questions would have been well suited to the Ben Kingsley interview, the awkward interview that's also on this channel. And Ben Kingsley was annoyed that the interviewer asked questions that lacked any depth, any creativity. They were common questions. So the key with rapport is, at least in the beginning, to match your communication style to the level of depth that meets the other person's comfort level and fits the context of the conversation. Now, if you found this to be helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel.